Okay, this is going to be a let's play for Project Firestart for the Commodore 64. Okay, uh, as this disc, uh, this screen will show, there's a lot of disc switching in this map. Um, go ahead and switch discs. Normally, I think I'll go ahead and uh, pause the game when this happens, but uh, you need to know that this game had a lot of disc switching. Um, but it was really cool game so <clears throat> and there's a lot of load time as well <clears throat> although it's not too bad except for maybe the first part <clears throat> the atmosphere for this game was just really awesome it was uh, even better than some movies in some cases and this is going to be probably a little bit different or a little bit more than a standard let's play because um I think what I'm gonna do is also kind of give uh, a tour of the game as a whole and like go into all the rooms and uh, so anybody uh, curious about what's all in this game will be able to find out okay that's your character John <coughs> with the laser gun and coming out of his spaceship in the first shuttle bay <laughs> the sprite of the character is pretty simple by today's standards, but back then, that was like really good graphics. Um, I would even say he's better, uh, looks more realistic than King Graham. Okay, we're gonna go up to level 2. Interesting thing about those elevators is that uh, when you press the button, sometimes you have to press it multiple times. Uh, and when a monster is coming, it's kind of gives that realistic, scary kind of feeling. Oh no! Scary, scary. Uh, but for his time, that was pretty scary and very graphic. This game was very graphic. Where it's time. <laughs> okay, I'm actually supposed to go out to the left there, but uh, as I said, we're gonna go exploring a lot. <clears throat> you can open and close doors. The thing about it's actually a good idea to close doors generally because uh, it seems like I might be totally wrong, but it seems like if you leave doors open, then the monsters will come out of those open doors more easily. In here, we have a uh, kind of a uh, monitoring room I guess. You have all uh, the video streaming in from all the videos cameras in the ship <clears throat> and it's again this is just I mean you never even really need to come to this room but um, it's just I think it's just cool because of the little detail this game had and all the things that are just showing up on the screen are actually places you can really go to so um, I think it's pretty cool. Okay, let's go ahead and go out. And we'll go ahead and close that door. Um, <coughs> I'm going to save right here because on a test play, this room kind of messed up. But I'm using a different set of discs. So hopefully it'll work. <coughs> Yeah, okay, this is the, I guess, technically the prison of the ship. You have a laser gate here that you can activate and turn off. Later on, uh, when we get to go against the, the white mutant monster, um, this is actually one of the ways that you can defeat or at least neutralize the monster. You lead him into here and... Uh, use your a little bit of extra speed to run back out and close the laser gate on him. I've done it before when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> it's one of the many ways you can uh, defeat or neutralize the uh, almost unstoppable uh, white uh, mutant monster. Because I'm pretty sure you can't kill the white monster just by using laser. Not even, I don't even think the pla the plasma rifle works. Um, 
here's some weapons you can get more uh, lasers uh, you can carry up to two and as you might have noticed when I took the laser it actually disappeared from the screen which uh, is pretty cool again for the time now they have some dynamite up there TNT I guess um, if you shoot if I shoot right now uh, while pointing up at the TNT it blows up and you will die so uh, again little details in this game that is kind of cool okay that's pretty much it for this section of the ship let me go ahead and go out close the door okay and then let's go ahead and continue Yeah, and then for now, I think I'm going to go ahead and continue on the normal route that you're supposed to take right after you get off the ship. At least uh, that was marked on the map that came with the game. Um, kind of told you where you were supposed to go right from the beginning. So we're going to go up to level 3. And there's some items I need anyways to uh, get... Um, at the top anyways so before I can go into certain rooms and whatnot I think I need a key card okay and then yeah, this room was scary to me when I was a kid I mean all these dead bodies around here um, I don't think any of these bodies are have anything on them you're supposed to check all the bodies in the game because they might have them. Even the instruction manual it says something like, "Check all the dead bodies in the games, even the bloody, mangled, torn up, shredded, uh, disgusting ones," because <laughs> you might find something useful. Something to that effect. It's pretty, actually, a pretty close um, quote to what it really said in the manual. Okay, let's go into here. There's a lot of story you get from the game by reading uh, the messages in the computers. Oh, unfortunately there's a graphic glitch here. Uh, when I was using the other set of discs, it had a lot of glitches. And this is the first time I found one though on this other set of discs. Okay, there's an ID card. That sucks because, you know, I had this game brand new when it came out. And, uh... Obviously, don't have the disc anymore, so. More and more my Commodore 64 either. Take the science log tape? Yes, that's one of the objectives of the game right there. That part freaked me out too when I was a kid at first. Kind of a jumping out. You just calmly walking by, and then all of a sudden, uh, cutscenes comes out and uh, cue the music and stuff like that. Uh, you know, even for a game back then, I mean, that's that was really cool. Um, still, they're doing it for games today, like games like Fear and stuff like that. Uh, Fear uh, was. Mm, Really, the effect of scare things, at least for me personally, is when something's really calm and all of a sudden something pops out of nowhere when you don't expect it. Uh, actually, this game, it had a scary feeling to it, but it didn't really have any moments that really just totally made me jump out. Except for maybe the very first part um, where you see the first dead body with its arm ripped off. Okay, um... So we're here at the, the computer, uh, the Prometheus Laboratory, and uh, you get the current messages here. Uh, maintenance test of the cryogenic hibernation systems completed all systems operational. These are just basic messages. Uh, okay, warning, lead glass in nucleus 
uh, viewing room is faulty. Radiation level may be lethal if the shield is drained. Not only do these messages give you kind of warnings of what, how to avoid your own death, but this is also a hint of how to kill the white mutant monster later on in the game. Um, okay, yellow alert. There's a problem in the Firestart labs. Unauthorized personnel will not be allowed to enter the area. Security, please report to the labs. Okay, I'm going to stop this video right here. Uh, that'll be it for the first uh, video of Let's Play Project Firestart.